Hey everyone, we are very happy to be here. Um, we are about to discuss Lambda malware, the hidden threat in Excel spreadsheets. Um, we are about to present a new research we've conducted in our team, so let's get into it and start with a little bit of the formalities. My name is Jonathan Baum. I'm a security researcher at the Mimecast research team. And I'm Daniel Wolfman. I'm a tech lead at the Mimecast research team. Before we move on, let me tell you a bit about Mimecast itself. Mimecast is an American-British corporate that provides to its customers um, security solutions for their gateway. They specialize in uh, email attacks and web attacks. Our team, specifically, research new threats, and we maintain one of Mimecast's core detection engines that uh, protect and prevent email threats. So when we're talking about an email threat, let me introduce you about a classic scenario where um, you can get a malicious email um, message. So let's say you have an ordinary email coming to your inbox that says, hi, you have some information update or some salary uh, updates, whatever. Uh, please kindly open the attached Excel document and uh, see more information there. Well, if you have some knowledge about uh, email attacks, um, uh, more specifically about office documents, you may have heard about VBA code. But if you didn't, let me introduce you about VBA. Uh, in this example, the attacker can obtain code execution through uh, immediately by opening the document, and then PowerShell will, that is built in in the Windows operating system, will just execute whatever the attacker wants all through VBA programming language. VBA is a programming language that Microsoft has released about 20 years ago, supporting um, all Office applications since then. And well, while they have um, released that for Windows operating system, it is currently only supported for Windows machine. And along all the years, attackers have used the ability of um, system functionalities that is related to VBA to execute malicious uh, code on the victim's machine. But on the victim's side, you don't have to be so helpless. These days, you have uh, free platforms like VirusTotal that will allow you to upload any kind of file that you want. And before you open it, if you upload this specific file, you can see that uh, you get a verdict of 60 different distinguished uh, static analysis engines that are there, and 40 of them actually, 40 different static analysis engines have the malicious verdict for this specific file. So I guess you can conclude that you shouldn't open the file, right? Um, so this is currently the situation, but let me introduce you about a new threat that we have researched that using a relatively new feature in Excel, we could establish a similar goal of the attacker of executing any code that I want on the victim's machine, but when I upload my artifact to VirusTotal, we get zero score. So let's begin. I want to introduce you about Lambda. Um, Microsoft has announced Lambda about two years ago now. And they called it the ultimate Excel worksheet function. Or in other words, it is just a custom function without any code. What is the really good benefit from here is my, finally Microsoft has released an advanced functionality tool for users in Excel to really empower their own Excel spreadsheets without any coding knowledge. So you don't have to use VBA anymore. You could just use Lambda to let's say, create custom functions that help you convert different temperature units. Or you can do data manipulation operations, and you can uh, create your own uh, data validation of, uh, functions, and do a lot of more uh, of such basic tasks. If you want to be really highly specific, you can even run down an entire D&D session using one spreadsheet full of lambdas considering all rules and factors in the game. And by that, you can easily calculate the damage that you're doing to an enemy in the middle of a battle. 
So a bit about Lambda. It is accessible to anyone without coding. Like I said, you don't have to know how to code, how to use VBA correctly. Now with Lambdas, you can just start away by popping up Excel and start creating your own Lambda functions to really empower your spreadsheets and use it in a more sophisticated way. Also, if you have some knowledge about Excel, you probably uh, heard about formulas. And you can even use Lambdas to, cooperately, to, to work cooperatively with uh, formulas. And by that, you can call each other even in a recursive manner. Also, unlike formulas, it is reusable. So you can stop copy-pasting your formulas or um, functionalities like this uh, in different places in the workbook. So you can just define one time Lambda and then use it from different places in your entire document. And like I've said, where VBA has been released only to Windows operating systems, now Lambda is actually accessible to any platform that currently Excel is supported on. So we're talking about um, the alternative operating systems for endpoints and also mobile platforms. So to summarize everything we just said about lambdas is that essentially lambdas are a way for the user to define custom functions tailoring Excel to your own specific need, which is kind of neat by itself, I think. However, with some clever usage of lambdas recursive abilities, we can really take Excel to a whole new level. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Just for the sake of it, I use lambdas to create the Mandelbrot set. If you don't know, the Mandelbrot set is a graph created by applying the same calculation over and over again, many, many times over a grid, ending up with this particular shape. Now, achieving this with plain Excel, no lambdas at all, would be nearly impossible. Using lambdas, I managed to do it just like that. So after watching and observing and studying the simplicity of lambdas, um, and after we figured that it can really take Excel to a whole new level, as a security research team, that provided us an obvious question to rise. Can lambdas actually take malicious document files to a whole new level? Can malicious actors use lambdas for their own benefits to maybe be undetectable, for example? So we battled up Jonathan here and VirusTotal to see if Jonathan can overcome static analysis engines to be undetectable, approaching the similar maliciousness goal of the attacker. So once again, my goal for the research was imitating a black hat hacker, attempting to figure out whether or not I could exploit a Lambda, the new feature, for my benefit. Now, whenever I'm conducting a new research, it is important to me to lay down my goals and my assumptions for the research. In this case, let's start with the goals. First, I'd like to be able to infect a remote machine using lambdas. Infecting machine is what an hack, uh, an hacker would like to do when getting access to uh, a new network, and lambda is the feature in question. I'd also like to be able to do it without being detected. We've seen earlier in the presentation that there, ha there have been numerous techniques for infecting machines using uh, malicious, mm -hmm. malicious document files. However, antivirus engines are very quick to pick up on them. Um, as for the assumptions, first, I assume that macros are enabled in the document. This can be due to a configuration error or maybe some sort of social engineering technique, tricking the user into enabling macros. I also assume that executing malicious PowerShell is a valid proof of concept, so that now I don't have to compile an exact virus uh, specific to the model of my victim's laptop. Just if I can execute PowerShell, it means that I can open a reverse shell. And a reverse shell is sufficient access for any hacker attempting to infiltrate the network. I also assume that virus total is a, is a decent indication for stealth. Any research requires an empiric measurement for success. And checking our samples over and over again on virus total against 60 of the uh, on, against 60 respected antivirus engines, resulting in a numeric score of how many of them marked as malicious, seemed like a good fit. Finally, I assume that no sandboxing is involved. We'll circle back onto that uh, later on, but for the time being, just be aware that the scope of this particular research revolved around static analysis rather than dynamic analysis. 
there are several reasons for this, and we will get to them later on. But for the time being, I had my goals and my assumptions in front of me, and I began the research. In particular, I was looking for ways in which I can incorporate lambdas with Excel's code executing mechanism, leading me in the direction of Excel 4.0 macros. Excel 4.0 macros are an older implementation of the concept of macros in Excel. They are, they've predated VBA macros, released in 1995, absolutely ancient, still supported, though virtually never used mechanism for Excel, uh, especially not for legitimate purposes. Excel 4.0 macros are implemented as a unique type of spreadsheet in which each cell contains a different instruction. You don't have to understand the exact syntax going on here, just notice how it looks and acts like a regular spreadsheet. Just like VBA macros, Excel 4.0 macros are very powerful. They can also read and write files to the file system and execute binaries, making them much beloved by hackers, yet very well known to the security community. One less, in, less interesting thing to note about the Excel 4.0 macros is that the cells in the spreadsheet may contain values and formulas just like a regular spreadsheet. And I was wondering, what about lambdas? Could I possibly use lambdas and incorporate them uh, in the Excel 4.0 macro sheet? And so I constructed my first experiment. First, I wrote a simple Excel 4.0 macro that does the exact same thing as the first example in the presentation. It spawns a PowerShell process and executes commands from a remote server. Upload the file to virus total, resulting in 17 detections. This would be our control group. Then, I constructed a new lambda in the document. It does nothing, it simply returns the exact string as the hard-coded payload, PowerShell slash C, whatever it is. Then, I modified my macro, uh, substituting the hard-coded payload with a call to my lambda. So now, once executed, get payload will evaluate to the payload, PowerShell slash C, blah, 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 which would then be executed by the exec instruction. I hit run to make sure it worked, and uploaded the file to virus total, resulting in seven detections. Meaning that already, by doing nothing, just substituting a hard-coded payload with a call to a lambda, I managed to fool 10 of the most highly respected antivirus engines in the industry, simply because they could not handle lambdas a feature which at that point had already been publicly available for six months. The reason, at least, we believe they couldn't figure it out is that the payload had been moved. It is no longer present in the Excel 4.0 macro. Uh, it is now present in the, in the context of the lambdas, a different component to Excel. Already great progress. But I'd like to go all the way down to zero. And to do that, I had to research the ways in which antivirus engines differentiate between legitimate macros and malicious ones. So, at this point of this research journey, I want to pause it for a second and talk about a concept called data flow analysis. So, there is a certain challenge that static analysis engines have to overcome when we're talking about um, data that is being um, working together from different places inside the document, or any file type that you wish for. So let's take an, another example that is similar to the first one that we've seen. Uh, and I'm talking about the VBA code. So now, as you can see, it is a bit more longer maybe, or a bit more complex, but it's still pretty readable. I mean, you could probably read line by line, and in a couple of seconds, you understand what the function is doing. But the same approach is need to be implemented when we're talking about scanning a file that is incoming to your organization. So the static analysis engines can sort of implement uh, an equivalent state tree where they iterate line by line, for example, and check the state and maintain it considering all possible values or conditions that is going through the function body. So as you can see, you can uh, you just observe and see how the flow is going through different variables inside the code. And to consider all possible scenarios when we're talking about conditions, if a specific condition is true or false. In that matter, you could probably imagine that as the more complex the code is, it is much more complicated to evaluate it properly and finding all the edges and eventually determining if 
um, the code is actually malicious or not. The final point about the relationship between the code's complexity and how difficult it is to evaluate stands behind uh, a, the, an anti-analysis technique called obfuscation. Essentially, malware authors are complexifying their code as much as possible, or maybe spaghettifying it as much as possible to make it as difficult as possible to evaluate it. Essentially, they're sacrificing performance for stealth. Once the technique had been introduced many years ago, it sparked an arms race between malware authors and the analysis engines, each one always trying to one-up the other in sophistication. And today, more or less, it can be said that the engines have the upper end because they use highly intelligent algorithms and plenty of resources and basically can overcome even the most complicated of obfuscation techniques. And I was wondering, maybe I could use lambdas to tip the scale in my favor as the black attacker. Let's see how I did it. First, I based on the fact that Excel's lambda evaluation engine is incredible. It is highly optimized, near instant. You can even say it is excellent. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> And I bet it could easily outperform even the most sophisticated of evaluation engines, of the analysis engines. So uh, to put that to a test, I first had to figure out where in the document lambdas are stored. Inside the Excel document, there's an inner XML file called workbook.xml. That's where the lambdas are stored. Now, I wrote a program that automatically generated lambdas for me, using many, very uh, many, many levels of recursion making decisions dynamically and in difficult to predict ways, making it, once again, as difficult as possible to evaluate to any engine other than Excel's. Um, here's me scrolling through the list of lambdas I generated, and, well, I don't have the exact corresponding graph to it, but um, here's an approximation of what it looked like. <laughs> okay, to bring it all together, I gave my lambdas another purpose not only acting as an obfuscation method, but also as a symmetric cipher. Nothing too fancy is going on here, just a simple XOR file. Uh, but it, what it means is that I can give it input on one end, which would come out encrypted on the other end. And if I give it encrypted input, it would come out decrypted. We'll see what's important in a little bit. But for the time being, uh, I went back to the control group macro, and I moved the payload one cell aside. Then. I encrypted it. I did this because now the word PowerShell is no, not present anywhere within the document. An analysis engine examining it would have absolutely no way of knowing it has anything to do with executing PowerShell or any other malicious activity other than going through the, the chain of lambdas I just generated, which can decrypt it. Finally, I added one more call to my lambdas. Uh, which is set to, decry to decrypt the encrypted payload. So, on execution, uh, entry point, the first lambda in the chain, would evaluate uh, receiving the encrypted payload as input. Eventually, it will decrypt it, evaluating it to the decrypted input, which would then be executed by the execute instruction. Got it? Good. Now, I hit run to make sure it worked, and uploaded the file to virus.total, resulting in two detections only. We are almost there, just not quite. At this point, I've been tinkering around my technique a little bit, seeing if I can make the, num the number go even lower, but eventually I concluded that for some engines, it seems like Excel 4.0 macros are always a cause for suspicion. And that kind of makes sense if you think about it, right? I did mention that Excel 4.0 macros are absolutely ancient, and it definitely makes sense for an, analy an analysis engine to examine a file and say, Wait, why is there an Excel 4.0 macro here? That technology is absolutely ancient. Something must be wrong here. I'm marking it as malicious anyway. For my research, it meant that I could not solely rely on Excel 4.0 macros for the execution. I had to find a different approach. So, at this part of the research, me and Jonathan have sat down and tried to understand how we can avoid being so exposed to the static analysis engines of us trying to execute Excel 4.0 macro. And to do that, we called uh, a story that happened last year. 
related to a really big malicious malware campaign um, that was actually relevant to Excel malware. And it was operated by a nation state attacker that uh, successfully infiltrated to many organizations while being undetectable for a while. And I'm talking about a couple of months here. So actually, we found some artifacts among our customers' environment. And wh when, we has, uh, when we have landed our hand on it, we, we just uh, did a static analysis. Uh, sorry, uh, we manually analyzed the file. And we tried to understand how it has been so uh, sophisticated so it could be undetectable for a while. So when we're approaching an initial access phase malware, we mainly expect from the malicious document to implement one, con one major concept, and that is drop and execute. The drop and execute is just a functionality where um, the malicious actor wants to, to deliver a minimal function as possible for him, so he wouldn't uh, risk, his, risk himself to be detectable while he is delivering the initial payload. And this minimal functionality will download more payload from um, the remote server, which is also owned by the attacker. And by that, only in runtime, the full infection will actually come approach in the victim's machine. So again, when we're talking about Excel, we expect it to be implemented either by VBA or Excel 4.0. But then we got a crucial insight here that we understood at this point why they have been so undetectable for a while. They just thought, why not using both? Why not splitting our mechanism to confuse static analysis engines and just be um, this, uh, just work at the same as before using either VBA or Excel 4.0. So let's see how they have done it. This is a high-level diagram that shows the initial access phase, starting all from uh, a simple Excel document being opened. As you can see, immediately uh, it is being split to two different paths. One is the macro sheet, which is, it, it, macro sheet, which is the, the right side of the tree, and the VBA script on the left side. So if we're talking about a perspective of static analysis engine, we want to iterate on each component on the document and to see if we find any malicious behavior, right? So let's see. If we're talking about the VBA script, all that the VBA, all that the static analysis engine have seen is just a script that is downloading a file to disk. That's it. No execution. No any other malicious behavior. Spoiler alert. A lot, of good, a lot of good files also do that. I mean, a lot of organizations use VBA scripts to download more information, more zip files that is related to organization, etc. I mean, there are a lot of common usages of downloading files from server, right? So in that case, in this specific context, the static analysis engine had to uh, make that, mark that as clean. So we're moving on to the macro sheet. And then, as you might expect, it is also clean as the macro sheet is just executing, uh, assuming, as, uh, and assuming an executable that is already present in the operating system. It doesn't actually relate that to the previous VBA script. So also, a lot of good usages of just starting an executable on disk. No seeing of any creating the file from uh, the cells of Excel or downloading it from anywhere just pure using shell on the executable name. And in that way, the malicious actor in this campaign has obtained a perfectly working drop and execute mechanism in their malicious file loader, which eventually loaded a bit more of malicious uh, payload, but it is not relevant at this point for static analysis engines. And that got us to inspiration of how we can make progress in our current research. So back to the research process. The model campaign we just mentioned, we came across it as a, as a crucial point for the research, at which I already figured out that it would be very difficult to rely solely on Excel 4.0 macros for the execution and still remain undetected. I figured I had to find a different approach and looked back at VBA. Basically, I was looking for a needle, for a needle in a very very big haystack of many documentation, 
uh, of many pages of documentation, looking for any function or mechanism I can somehow exploit, experimenting with it, and nothing, nothing really worked. Um, <clears throat> but then we came across the malware campaign, which utilized a combined approach of using both VBA and Excel 4.0 macros in a way that managed to throw off the detection engines. We drew inspiration from that and used a function in VBA, which is called execute Excel 4 macro. The function does more or less what it says. It takes a string and executes it, just like a regular uh, instruction cell on Excel 4.0 macro. Meaning that these snippets of VBA is set to execute once the document is opened. It then calls ex uh, Excel for, an Excel 4 macro, which then uses the lambdas to, get to, re to retrieve the decrypted payload and execute it. It's run to make sure the whole, co the whole approach worked and uploaded the final sample to VirusTotal, resulting in zero detections. Finally, Ooh. success. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so I wrote an email to my teammate Daniel and sent him the final sample, asking him to click on it. Let's watch a demo of what happened once he did. I opened the port on my machine. And immediately when Daniel opened the file, I gained shell access to his machine. I can execute commands, start up binaries, I can handle his sensitive files on his machine. Just about anything I want to do and he would have no way of, uh, of knowing what's going on. Yeah, it sucks to be on the victim side, right? <laughs> um, okay, so before we are concluding the, um, the talk here, I want to circle back for um, dynamic analysis, which is uh, sandboxing, if you wish to call it like that. Uh, you're probably thinking on, from this specific demo, uh, won't any ordinary sandbox will catch that? I mean, this is just an Excel program process, actually, that is opening up a child process, which is PowerShell in this case, that's really, really highly suspicious. And we know that a lot of sandboxes are verdict have the verdict of malicious from this specific pattern of behavior. You're totally correct. This is not the point of where we want to demonstrate of how we show we bypass sandboxes, right? But let me talk about some points that we have about sandboxing. Sandboxing is really expensive. I mean, if, you're, if we're talking about a large-scale corporate where you want to observe any file that is sending from and to your organization, uh, and again, I'm telling you that this is a large-scale corporate, which is uh, a really common um, site, <laughs> uh, you can sandbox everything because it takes a lot of time and also a lot of resources. So, but let's assume you do uh, sandbox every file or some files. Uh, if we're talking about Lambda malware here, um, we observed some of the common uh, sandbox evasion techniques that are out there. And we know this is a, a really uh, a subject that has been researched from, on the past and a lot of publications about that. Uh, we figured that most of the uh, sandbox evasions can be actually re-implemented using only Lambdas uh, in, the, in the Lambda malware. So for example, you can easily check if you're in a virtualized environment by uh, querying registries and checking local files on disk. Or you can just execute your uh, deobfuscation chain on a certain timestamp where you know that the victim will uh, open the file. And you can just be dependent on external resources that you're, you do want to download many more uh, techniques of how you can implement that. And that's why, assuming we, are, we, we can implement one of the techniques, we are not focusing here on sandboxing when we have researched the threat. So to conclude, Lambda, as, it, as we've shown you, is really a game-changing feature. I mean, every good user, for example, can just start using Lambdas. And without any coding knowledge required, you can create your own functions and just immediately empower every task that you are doing with Excel immediately. And as a security research perspective, you should always consider that although we admire Microsoft for innovating such a cool feature in a really uh, 
common tool like Excel, it is our responsibility to be aware of any new features that is coming uh, through uh, these vendors and eventually delivered to our customers. And we are responsible for studying it, and we need to understand it properly so we can make sure that we mitigate as well if any new threats are exposed, like we have shown you. So, two more meta points about the research before we can move on to the Q&A. Um, first, I'd like to say that we have checked, and at least at the time of writing the slide, we haven't found any malware campaigns that are utilizing lambdas in the wild. But I think the broader point is that the same process and principles as we just showed you can and will uh, be used by hackers when researching new features in any software you are claiming to protect. So, some recommendations other than, of course, uh, incorporating best practices when protecting uh, your network. I'll also say that if you are an analysis engine or a, a, a detection engine, I would recommend keeping up for the updates to the software you are claiming to protect and come up with ways uh, of detecting malicious activity that do not solely rely on your current understanding of the program, as that could change later on. I believe it is our duty as a security community to protect against all types of threats, both old and new. So with that in mind, um, now is a good time for questions. Thank you. Um, yeah, there's someone there who's <laughs> raising hand. <laughs> No question? No question. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, feel free to approach us after that if you want to ask a personal question. Uh, for, uh, excuse me? Yeah. Yeah, sure. Uh, hey. Yeah, here. Hi. <laughs> um, there is something that uh, was not really clear to me is um, uh, where do you actually write the Lambda function in the worksheet itself? Um, so you can use the interface to create a new, new Lambda function. That's a good question. And, and they are relevant to the namespace of the document itself. So you can't incorporate Lambdas from one document to another, not easily. Uh, yeah. You use them and define them in your own document. Mm -hmm. And just, that's where they live until you del delete them. OK, so mostly you're writing your own function, but directly in the worksheet. and. Um, Previously, we have to write it in VBA. Is that correct? I mean, I can mean, you repeat uh, the question? Yeah. Um, I mean, the, um, with the Lambda, you can write directly the function in the worksheet itself. So I mean, in the cell of the Excel. OK, um, yeah. But previously, we have to write it in the VBA part, kind of. Um, that's one difference between Lambdas and VBAs. I'd say that. While you can use, uh, you, you can define lambdas in cell and then use them like that. That's not very common at all. I don't think it's even that supported. Okay. Um, usually, you have a different interface to do so in Excel, uh, which is which you can uh, define names. You, you can assign names to certain values, mm -hmm. and that's where you say you open the GUI and you, you type my lambda, and my lambda is this and this and this. And then, for the document, whenever you type your your lambda name, uh, it acts as a function. Um, I am not aware of any way of doing anything similar, like calling VBA snippets from on the fly from Excel. M maybe it is possible, and I'm just not quite aware of it. Okay. Um, so that is, yes, that is one difference in, in the way in which you interact with VBA versus Lambda. So um, just to make sure I understood properly, so the big difference here is mainly that um, uh, you don't need user interaction to actually execute the, the code or the part of the code. Um, the main difference between VBAs and Lambdas? Yes. Um, well, no, I said that the main difference is that Lambdas are awesome and VBA is not. <laughs> um, <laughs> also that there are several differences. Um, that's one of them. Also, um, yeah, well, there are several differences. I mean. Um, le let me just share that uh, while we are aware of some policies that Microsoft is allowing for 
um, organizations, IT, for example, to strict or, or stuff like that. I, I mean, we are, I'm not aware of any possible um, restrictions that Microsoft can allow you to do to like disable lambdas. So eventually, if you're talking about user interaction, uh, considering that you are approaching as a black hat hacker uh, approach of social engineering where you should like click on that enable content um, button that is above, mm -hmm. uh, which is we, we see a lot of different malicious files in uh, VirusTotal that uh, adopted this approach. Or there is a possibility that there is a config error where uh, the policy is just allowing Excel 4.0 macros to run. And with that, in the same goal, uh, you can execute lambdas as well. All right, that's clear. Thank you very much. Sure. Thank you. Um, anyone else? Yeah. Hey, hello. Uh, so thank you so very Wait. much for your presentation. Well, I can see you. I can see you. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. I'm hi. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, thanks for the presentation, for the nice presentation. And uh, actually, I was trying to to follow the flow. But I lost you at the at a part. I don't know if we can have the presentation so that we can review it later, and then maybe uh, why not uh, take it as a base for our own research. So yeah, can we have the presentation or some? I mean, any any resources that we, that will explain in summary what you just present. So I think you'll have the slides and the presentations recording. I would advise against um, using it from anything naughty. And, uh, <laughs> no, no, don't uh, worry for that. We, we will probably um, either uh, the Lehak um, staff will publish that, or we might uh, have our approval to uh, publish that in our social media platforms or mm -hmm. Mimecast uh, profile in Twitter or whatever. Um, Feel free, anyway, to reach us out later. Maybe we can like, uh, see what, how we can arrange that. Cool, but sure, cool. uh, I think th this information should be shared among uh, defensive security, at least. Uh, we're, we're not expecting any uh, malicious attackers now to overwhelm us and, <laughs> uh, and just start a, a huge wave of uh, lambdas. Sure. Uh, any more questions? Uh, yeah, hi. We have seen that uh, you used to split the drop and exec uh, function. Yeah. You've used VBA and mm -hmm. the Excel macro. And to call the macro, you use the code on VBA called the exec uh, Excel for... Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you uh, think this could be used to detect this kind of malwares? Like when you see in the VBA, it's calling a macro code. Okay, so short answer is yes. You can definitely simply uh, blacklist the, that, that function call. That, that would definitely suffice for blocking this particular implementation of the attack. Which, that was your question, right? Like whether yes. or not we, we can, can base our detection yes. on execute Excel for Michael. Yes. Okay, so there is no good uh, usage of this function? Um, I, mean. I mean, I bet someone out there did something useful for using execute Excel for Michael, but if such uses exist, yeah. I haven't come across it. Okay, thank you. Any more questions? Cool. All right, thank you very much. Thanks. We had a good time. Thanks a lot.